Hello, and welcome back from the land of testing. So today we are going back to Unit 2 Ecology, and we're looking at Lesson 2 over the water biomes. There are three major types of water biomes. You have oceanic, or the marine biome, freshwater biome, and the estuary biomes. Um, the estuary is where salt water meets fresh water, and we'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. We're going to start this lecture talking about the freshwater biome. The freshwater biome has abiotic factors, which would include water pH, um, rocks, um, like if there's rocks or riffled bottom streams, as compared to having muddy bottom streams. If you've ever noticed, towards Sedalia, um, where you're in like the Ozark Upper Plateau and crop area, that those streams like Muddy Creek, Muddy Creek, Creek has earned its name. It is extremely muddy on the bottom, where if you look at the streams in our area, like from Highway 52 down south, we have the beautiful rock bottom streams. And those two types of ecosystems are completely different. If you look at all the water on Earth, so let's say this graduated cylinder, which has 100 mils in it, if this represents all of the water on Earth, and when you look at the oceans, the ice caps, freshwater biomes, estuaries, etc., if you take one mil, one percent, so I'll see if I can do this. Okay, so. The freshwater biomes, freshwater, oop, a little bit more, just a smidge. So if you look at all the water on earth, only this much, only this much is freshwater. That's it. That's it. But you flush your toilets the water that you run in the basin of the sink when you're brushing your teeth, the dishwasher, the washer, um, et cetera, all of those things that use a huge amount of water, all of that, plus the rivers, the lakes, the streams, all of that is this much of the world's available water. This is fresh water. That's how important it is for us to take care of our freshwater ecosystems. Aquatic plants and algae in the, um, in the freshwater ecosystems, they are what release oxygen into the water. If your plant life within a stream or within a pond, if that plant life dies off, you have an issue because you're not going to have dissolved oxygen in that water. And anything with gills, not lungs, but gills, those gills have to have dissolved oxygen in that water in which to survive. Let's say, let's say your neighbor owns turkey barns and um, it's expensive to get rid of the waste and the litter from the turkey barn. So let's say he decides to take a chance and he dumps it in the stream so it'll just wash it downstream. Well, all of the nitrogen in that, in that substance, in that, um, the poo, the bird poo, the waste, etc., that is going to increase the nitrates in the water, which is they're going to greatly increase the algae in the water. And you might think, well, that's no problem because algae is going to release all of this oxygen. Well, what's going to happen is that all of this algae is going to carry out photosynthesis within the stream. It's going to release a ton of oxygen, and now the water is super saturated. And guess what? That can kill fish. So now you have all of this algae, and it's called an algae bloom. Well, you hit the end of the lifespan of that algae, or you have waste build up in that ecosystem, and the algae starts to die. So now you have your bacteria that are going to come in, and the bacteria is going to break down the algae. Well, bacteria, does it take in oxygen, or does it take in carbon dioxide, and what is it giving off? All right, it's going to take in oxygen. It's going to give off carbon dioxide. So what fish are still remaining? Well, 
Now, all of the dissolved oxygen is gone and you have a major fish kill. So, you might think, oh, okay, it's a stream, the water is moving, it'll straighten itself out. No one will ever know. Well, okay, so let's say neighbors three farms down. All of a sudden, they go to go fishing in the stream and here is hundreds of belly up fish it's like, so they call the conservation department who calls the Department of Natural Resources and here they come. And they're gonna start running tests and they have tests that can trace those nitrates all the way back to the point of where those nitrates or that waste was thrown into the stream. A largemouth bass is $8. Um, a bluegill is worth five or six dollars. So you start adding up each one of those fish and they're going to do that. They're going to bring a team in and they're going to find every dead fish and they're going to get the calculator out and that is the fine that is levied against the farmer who dumped the nitrates into the stream. You might say, well, maybe it was an accident that the waste ended up in the stream. No. If you're going to have livestock, if you're going to have turkey barns, etc., it is your responsibility to make sure that waste does not end up in the stream in large amounts. Frog, snake, fish, crawdads, crayfish, algae, elodia, which are the little coontails is what they're called. They're like one of the main aquatic plants within the freshwater system. And all of those have a very tenuous, a very touchy ecosystem that must be maintained. Estuaries. Estuaries are the areas where fresh water meets ocean water. You may have heard the word brackish before in regards to water. So it's that water in the estuary is not quite as salty as the ocean but it's not quite as not salty as the freshwater. So it is in that area in between, and that is what is called brackish. There are several different types of organisms that are able to live in the estuaries. One of the favorites is the manatees. So the manatees are also called the sea cows, and the manatees are going to be grazing on those tall sea grasses that are growing within the estuary. Now, People that we are, we love to boat, all right? So you start bringing in some speed boats and those speed boats are docked pretty much in the estuaries. So as they're being brought up to the dock, well, the manatees, they're very slow, they're very laid back creature. They can't get out of the way of the boats and the props. And hopefully the manatee survives, but a lot of times the manatee doesn't survive when it's hit by the props from that particular boat. Um, so that's one of the problems that the estuaries are facing. Also, if there is chemical type pollution coming from upstream from the freshwater biome, that's going to accumulate in the estuary because the salt water is not going to want to be mixing with the freshwater. And so you can end up with larger deposits or more concentrated deposits of pollution within the estuaries. Again, it is a very tenuous ecosystem that we need to work hard to maintain. The oceanic biomes. So your salt water, um, your salt water, your oceans cover about 75% of Earth. So if you look at, it takes like three days to drive from here to South Carolina, if you take it at a pretty good pace, you could probably do it in about a day and a half or so, two days. But if it takes that long to get to the coast, and if you look on a globe, it's maybe about this much distance. Well, then you look at from the coast, over to England and you look at all of that water, okay? And that is all the ocean biome. And there are several different layers or areas of the ocean biomes that we will cover at a later date. The majority of life is going to be living around the coastlines of the ocean. Phytoplankton is going to provide the dissolved oxygen within the ocean. Phytoplankton also provides anywhere from 70 to 75% of the oxygen that you're breathing right now. So we have tons of laws protecting the ocean, right? 
No. All right. Um, they're working on, they're called maritime laws. And the, the maritime laws are the laws that cover all of the oceanic areas. Otherwise, a country itself only owns about 100 miles from the coast out to the ocean. They only own or can have laws for like that 100 miles. But that whole big vast area, that all falls under maritime laws. An example of a maritime law is no whale hunting. Um, it's very difficult to get all of those countries with coastlines to agree upon laws, which leaves the ocean very vulnerable. A huge problem in the ocean today is plastic in the ocean, and the majority of the plastic are the plastic water bottles. And so that's why we encourage that you have your own water bottle that you clean each day, and you use that instead of having the trash water bottles that you're constantly throwing away because they do not break down well in nature. Some of the oceanic animals are the whales, the seals, the dolphins, octopus, crabs, lobster, and again, those vitally important phytoplankton. Well, thank you for listening to the lecture today. You need to answer the questions on page 85, number one through eight, and those are due at the beginning of the hour on Monday. Thank you.